Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is David Evans. I'm a chief in Central Union. I've been there for a very long time. Hope to, hope to be there for a very much longer time, too. This afternoon, I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to talk about developing GP networks and try and look at some of the challenges we've got and why, why I think it's a good thing and what it's really what, what the, the potential for, for it is. That might have been you this morning, it's probably me on Friday. I, th I think we're all very aware of the challenges, and you've heard Mahini and Adam relate to them. We, we, we live in a world where patient knowledge is increasing, expectation is increasing, everything wants to be done yesterday, they want appointments tomorrow, not next week or any reason it's not. People are living longer, which is great, but they're also living with quote vulnerabilities, which is an increasing challenge for all of us. And medicine is becoming more complex. As Alan, uh, 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 Adam has already suggested, income and expenditure disparity is happening in practice. Our, our utility bills for all our practices are increasing, our incomes are decreasing, but we'll, and also if we want to maintain them, we all seem to be having to work much harder. As Mahini has alluded to, out of hospital pressures are coming. I think it's, it's a given this is going to continue, it's not going to change. The fact of the matter is there is a cash limited budget at the moment for health and clearly the cheaper way to do it is to provide a significant amount of this care outside hospitals. Adam has alluded to, and he also to the some anxiety regarding the 2014 fragmented in cost service anxiety. And also, as we're all aware, in fragmented care, we all seem to be having to deal with lots and lots of different agencies, and it's very, very difficult to keep up with it. There's a, there's a sometimes a tendency to think everything was better yesterday, you know, it was all much easier in the past. It, it, to some extent, life, I think general practice life was more straightforward. But there was one big issue that dogged all many of our lives, it was the out of hours, the out of hours issue. Until the development of co-ops in the late 80s, early 90s, GPs were either doing themselves, and it was really full on 24 hours, and it was exhausting. Or if you didn't do it yourself, you were paying quite a lot of money for somebody else not, not to do it very well. And generally a dissatisfying service. And I think those who are really old like me will probably remember those days. Well, what happened? The, the, the co-op movement started. And I think we'll use this as an example to say that general practice has an incredible strength behind us, an incredible amount of initiative. And for weeks and weeks, my, my, myself and my colleagues in those days were on call seeing five or six patients each day on a Saturday or Sunday, but really hanging around most of the time, not doing much. But we just needed to get it, get it together, and I think it mainly in the northwest and the Bolton area, the idea of co-op started, and then of course it, it, it spread, and, and in this area we were involved, closely involved with the early development department, of course it's clearly been in the news recently. I think the strengths of the co-ops is the organisation was practice-based, GPs and practice-based, with a sense of providing high-quality care to your colleagues, your own patients, also your colleague patients. It was manageable. People did shifts that turned up that was reliable, it was financially sound. We, and also, once again, it was a bottom-up approach that was really grounded, grounded in your practice. And it wasn't a Department of Health initiative. We did this ourselves. And surprisingly, GPs found they enjoyed working together. There was, there was also a social element to it. So we've done, it we've done it before, and the challenges I mentioned early on are still there. And my, my strong belief is that the idea of networks, which really is mini co-ops. I mean, the co-op was, was on a much larger scale, but this is mini co-ops, and we're already doing it with the ICP, we're doing it with anti-coagulation, and if EQBs come along in 2014, it may be very useful for us to think about working together and developing contracts and bidding, because Care UK and et al are out there, and they, as Adam alluded to, they will probably be looking for lost leaders. But we, we've, got the, we've got the initiative, we've got the, the understanding of our patients, we know our patients want, well, and also we've got the organisational structure practices behind us. There's no reason why, as networks, we can't make practice finances more secure. I'm sure for stationary and etc., utilities, etc., if we were to separate practice, is practice together, we're bidding for uti um, utility, gas, electricity arrangements with various companies, or stationary, etc., we could get a much better deal. At the same time, I think it's really important that we, we do have 79 practices in the end. There's a figure that comes up quite frequently, but 
it's something I, I think, you know, we, we need to look at the strengths of all those individual practices. And within networks, I think it's really important that practice autonomy is maintained because they're coming together to share ideas with shared advantage, shared advantage of patient care, making making ourselves much more cost effective. But I don't think at any time we should think of challenging practice autonomy. So we have this, once again, 79 practices in the evening. High, we, we do provide high quality care. I think we work in a very challenging environment. I think all the GPs in the evening do a great job, and I think it's very proud that we're all part of that organisation. But the, the usual service has been challenged. We need organisations that allow individual practices to flourish and meet the challenges of tomorrow. And working as, networks, sorry, working as a network can be a real catalyst for that. So in summary, I think we have 79 practices, but we also have seven solutions, and those are the seven individual networks which everybody here knows about, where they're scattered right across every, every practice and, and the patch is covered. And I think our, our motto for the future is 79 practices, seven solutions, for providing good care within a balanced budget.